this video looks at calculations with integers. Remember that integers are whole numbers. That includes negative numbers and zero. There are two rules and these are straightforward. If we got two plus signs or two negative signs, in other words the same signs, then the answer is going to be positive. If we've got different signs, a minus and a plus, or a plus and a minus, then the answer will be negative. Let's just look a little bit at negative numbers and how we use them in general. First of all, all ordinary numbers like 5 are always positive numbers. They have a hidden plus sign in front of them. Secondly, the sign on the number tells us which side of zero we can actually find it. So if I've got negative 3, I know that it will be less than zero. And so it shows us where it is on the number line. Thirdly, if we look and see a calculation like 7 take away 3, 7 minus 3, it can show us we are subtracting. So we've got to be careful about this thing with signs. Sometimes it tells us where the number is. Sometimes it tells us what we've got to do with the number. And if we've finished a calculation, what starts out with an actual subtraction may end up showing us the actual position of the number as a negative answer. So it can be just a little bit confusing. So here we've got 7. If we take away 3, we know we go down the number line three places, and so our answer for 7, take away 3, is 4. Now, if we look at things like negative 3 times negative 4, they can be written in different ways. Here we can see on the left that it's written with brackets, and on the right it's written without brackets. These two things really mean the same thing, but often the brackets are put there just to kind of protect the negative number, to make clear that it is a negative number times a negative number. And if you're using your calculator, you should always put negative numbers into brackets. When you find the key on your calculator, it does show that you should put brackets around negative numbers. So, working with our rules, if the signs are the same, it's a positive answer. If the signs are different, it's a negative answer. Here are some examples. 5 times negative 2. The 5 is positive, the 2 is negative. So we know our answer will be negative. Then we just do 5 times 2, which is 10. So our answer is negative 10. On the second one, we got 7 times plus 7. We know the first of those sevens is a plus number as well. The signs are the same. Seven sevens are 49, both plus signs, and so the answer is 49. Next example, negative 3 times plus 4. We know that 3 times 4 is 12, but this time we've got different signs. We've got a negative 3 and a plus 4. So instead of just being 12, it's negative 12. Fourth example. Negative 2 times negative 5. Again, we know that 2 times 5 is 10. Dead easy, just ordinary multiplying. But we just look at the signs. We've got a negative on the 2 and a negative on the 5. The signs are the same, so the answer is 10. Exactly the same rule works when we're dividing. If we've got negative 24 divided by 8, well, we know 8 is going to 24 three times. The 24 is negative. The 8 is positive. So our answer is not just 3, it is negative 3, because we've got different signs in the question. For f, we've got a negative 15 divided by a negative 3. We know 5 times 3 is 15, so if we divide, we get the answer 5. We've got a negative 15 and a negative 3. The signs are the same. So the answer is positive, it's 5. Now just be a little careful when you're squaring. Lots of people looked at negative 7 squared and say, oh, the answer is negative 49. No, it's not. What you're doing is you're doing negative 7 times by itself. Negative 7 times negative 7. Because the signs are the same, the answer is going to be positive. So it's plus 49. If we go on to cube, don't need to worry about squares and cubes too much at this stage, but let's just do it. If we've got negative 2 cubed, we're multiplying it by itself three times. The first two negative 2s multiply together to give us plus 4. 
because we've got two negative twos multiplied together. So now we've got plus four times negative two. Multiply that together, the plus four times the negative two gives us a negative eight. So when you're squaring and cubing and using other powers, you've got to just be a little bit careful about how many negatives are being multiplied together and therefore what the answer should be. Let's look at adding and subtracting. Multiplying and dividing are easier than adding and subtracting. First question, seven take away three. The first number, seven, shows us where we are on the number line. Take away three, we know if we subtract, we go to the left, and we're going three places to the left, so our answer is four. On the second question, we're going to start with three, and we're taking away seven. So we're starting at three and moving left seven places. And of course, that gets us the answer of negative four. Now you might just look at those two questions and see if we take away the smaller number, we get plus four, just ordinary taking away. If we subtract, take away the larger number, then the answer is exactly the same, but it is negative. We just turn the three and the seven round and we get the negative answer. How about if we start with a negative number? Well, we see we're starting with negative two on the number line and we're taking away five. The process here is exactly the same. We're going back five spaces. We're going to the left five spaces. And people look at this and say, how about it? Negative seven, surely that's a bigger number. No, it's not, that's the problem. Negative seven is smaller than negative two. And so when we take away, our normal thinking is exactly correct, is that when we take away, we get a smaller answer. We get a number that is more negative than the question that we started with. How about when we add? So let's look at this one where we get minus two, that's our starting place, and we're adding on five. When we're adding, we're going to the right. And so we are putting our numbers going up the number line. And if we start at minus two, we add five on, we get an answer of three. The first number in all these questions, like the negative two here, tell us where we start from. And then the add five or the plus five tells us which direction we're going in. Now, we've got a different set of problems coming. This is where it starts just getting a bit tricky and people get confused. But hey, if you're with me, you won't keep confused. Here we are, 12, take away negative, hang on a minute, that's just really weird. How can you take away a negative number? Well, let's just look at this. We've got two negatives in the middle. <laughs> for all the sirens, but I hope you get the point. This is all about a muddle in the middle. We've got two signs arguing with each other and we've got to sort out what the answer is going to be. And in one sense, what's happening is that one negative sign is always trying to change the other one. And so we just apply exactly the same rules as we had before. We know that two negatives give us a plus. And so it's dead easy. It's just 12 add 4. And we know 12 add 4 gives us an answer of 16. We sorted out the muddle in the middle, we turned it into a plus, and we got the answer of 16. Here's another example. 5 add negative 7. I'll excuse you the sirens this time. But we got a muddle in the middle. And we know our rules of signs, and we apply them to this muddle in the middle. If we've got a plus and a minus, that gives us a minus. So we're taking away. So it's dead easy. Five, take away seven. We end up with negative two. Third example is the one when people get more confused. Negative six, take away positive three. But still, we've got a muddle in the middle. This is the only thing to look at, a muddle in the middle. Here it is. The signs are different. We got a minus and a plus. 
a minus and a plus. Different signs give us a negative, a take away. So we're taking away. Negative six, take away three. Now we're done with our rules of signs. We don't do anything new starting at negative six on the number line and going back three places. And so it becomes more negative, negative nine. And that is the rules of negative numbers. If the signs are the same, we get a positive answer or a plus operation. If the signs are different, we get a negative answer or we use a negative taking away operation. Let's just have a quick look. So here we go with the first of our questions at the top. Negative 5, add 3. No rule of signs used here at all. No muddle in the middle. We're not multiplying or dividing. Don't do anything other than start at negative 5 on the number line, add 3 on, and we come to minus 2. Next one. We've got a muddle in the middle. We've got plus minus 4. This isn't any good, so the rules of signs say we've got to have a negative, a take away. 6 take away 4, answer 2. C. Again, muddle in the middle. A minus and a plus. Different signs. Different signs means we've got to use a negative, a minus, a take away. So we put a take away in between, and now we know it's 7 take away 6. Dead easy. Answer 1. D. Again, a muddle in the middle. And this is the only place where we're using our rules of signs. Take away negative 7. If we're taking away a negative, same signs, and so that's the same as adding. So we've got negative 3, add 7. We've used our rules of signs, nothing more to do. Start at negative 3, go to the right on the number line, 7 places, and we'll work our way up to plus 4. Again, negative 5, take away plus 4. Different signs in the middle are going to give us a subtract. So negative 5, take away 4. Starting at negative 5, getting more negative by 4 places, negative 9. Last sum, 6, take away negative 5, muddle in the middle. Oh, yep, got to use our rules of signs here. Two negatives make a positive, so it's 6 plus 5, and the answer is 11. Same signs positive, or it becomes an adding operation. Different signs negative, or it becomes a subtraction, a take away. So a quick summary on this. Here we go, first question, adding and subtracting. Oh, hang on a minute, different signs. We've got a muddle in the middle, a plus and a minus together. We know that if we've got different signs, that's going to be a negative, so we're going to do a takeaway operation. Five, takeaway three is two. Second one, negative three times negative seven. Three times seven, 21. Is it going to be negative or positive? We've got the same signs, and on this one, because we're multiplying, we're looking at the signs of each of the numbers, negative 3, negative 7, same signs, and so the answer is positive, 21. C. Muddle in the middle. Rules of signs, apply it just to the muddle in the middle. We've got the same signs again. We know that same signs are going to give us a plus operation, so if we're going to add 7, add 4, answer 11. D. Dividing. Back to looking at the signs on each of the numbers. This time they're different. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Is it going to be negative 6 or positive 6? It's going to be negative because the signs are different. E. Negative 2 and negative 8. Here we are. We've got a muddle in the middle. We know that we've got different signs. We're going to do a takeaway operation. So negative 2 is going to be subtract 8. It's going to become more negative. So the answer is negative 10. F. Negative 2, take away negative 8. Here again, a muddle in the middle. Use the signs, which are the same. So our rule tells us that that's going to give us a plus operation. So we're going to have negative 2, add 8 on. We add that on, and we get an answer of 6.